Hey AP, let's uh, rock out another video here. So this time we will talk about empirical molecular formula, uh, combustion analysis, and hydrates. Actually, we'll probably talk about hydrates and then combustion analysis, but um, let's go through this. Um, so coming in here, uh, you probably have already seen this activity, hopefully. If not, it should be posted and everything else. Um, but it just kind of goes through empirical molecular formula and does some practice on it. So there's a couple of pages of it. Um, so if you haven't done this activity, look for it and um, uh, make sure that you do this at some point. Um, but that brings us here. So from that activity and from honors, you probably remember empirical molecular formulas um, at least a little bit. So, um, Empirical formulas have that fun little rhyme to figure them out. So percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, multiply to whole. Um, once you find the empirical formula, if you know you can find the molar mass of it, and then if you have the molar mass of the actual compound, um, you can uh, figure out what the subscripts for the uh, actual compound is. Um, so you just divide the molar mass of the compound by the empirical formula, and that tells you the ratio. Um, so hopefully you remember all this from honors. Um, if not, you'll see a little bit of this stuff in this video here. But uh, going through from there, um, we'll break this down into three parts. So there's general empirical molecular formula problems, there's hydrate problems, and then combustion analysis problems. So the general ones, again, this is the stuff that we did back in honors and the stuff in that activity. So what is the empirical formula of a molecule that contains 65.5% carbon, 5.5% hydrogen, and 29.0% oxygen? And then it gives us the molar mass of the compound itself, which is 110 grams. So what's the molecular formula? Um, so going through this whole thing, um, again, percent to mass, mass to moles, um, so percent of mass, mass to moles. Um, so we have 65.5% um, carbon. So that just, we just straight up turn that percentage into a gram value. Um, figure out what the moles of carbon th that is. So there is that right there. Um, Zoom properly. All right. Well, let's, yeah. we'll, we'll leave it as it. Um, having issues with the zoom. All right. So um, get that to moles. Do the same thing with hydrogen and oxygen. So percentages become grams. Um, figure out moles and moles. So we have 5.45 moles of carbon, 5.45 moles of hydrogen, and then 1.8125 moles of oxygen. Divide all those by this value, which is the smallest. Um, so that gives you three, three, and one. And since these are whole numbers, we don't need to do anything with them at all. We just use them as is. So that gives us an empirical formula of C3H3O. Um, now that we know the empirical formula, we can find the molar mass of that. So all the carbons plus all the hydrogens plus all the oxygens gives us 55.06 grams per mole. It tells us it tells us that the compound is 110, and this thing is 55. So divide the compound by the empirical to give you two. So that means that you just multiply all these subscripts by two. So the compound is C6H6O2. Um, that's kind of just a basic uh, general empirical molecular formula problem. Um, so that should seem familiar from honors and everything else. Hydrates are going to be new. These definitely are things we don't talk about in honors. So we'll talk about these here. Ooh. Excuse me. Um, so going through hydrates. Uh, hydrate is a chemical compound that contains water as part of its crystal formula. So water is kind of incorporated into this, this crystal structure. Um, and you can get rid of that water by heating up the crystal. So you have 
a crystal that has water kind of incorporated into it. It's absorbed some water. You can heat it up to drive that water off and um, you'll lose that hydrate portion and you'll make an anhydrate or an anhydrous substance, which is one that has lost its water or has no water in it. Um, so an anhydrous salt is one that has no water in it. A hydrate is one that has absorbed water. Um, and they sort of are written in this general formula of like, here's the salt. And then you use this dot symbol and you say how many moles of water there is per every thing of salt. Um, so it'd be something like magnesium chloride. So MgCl dot, I don't know, like three water molecules or whatever that happen sometimes. Um, there's this little like uh, simulation activity here. Um, we kind of just took screenshots of it, of the pieces of it that are important. So you don't have to go through this entire thing, but you are welcome to use this link and try it yourself. But in this case, we have copper two sulfate hydrate. So this is a hydrate salt. It's a nice blue crystal. Um, we use this stuff all the time um, for lots of different things. And you guys have probably seen it in the lab at some point. Um, if you put that thing in an evaporating dish and heat it up, you basically just put a Bunsen flame under it or you can put it in an oven or whatever else. Um, as you heat it up, you drive off all this water. So you have copper sulfate times some amount of water and we're trying to figure out how what this X value is. Um, and we heat it up and we drive it all off and we make the anhydrous and then there's all this water vapor floating around. So when we run it, you see that these crystals went from this nice blue color to this like white color. So this is the anhydrous salt. Now we've driven off all of this water. So 0 0.1106 grams of water. Um, and you just keep driving it off and it becomes completely white. And then what do we do with all that? Well, we know what the initial mass of the sample was, and we know what the final mass of the sample was of the anhydrous salt. So we know 0.176 grams was our, our starting. This is what it was after we drove off all the water. So that difference in mass came from the water. We can convert that difference in mass, so all of that, the mass of the water, to moles of water. We can convert the mass of the anhydrate left over to moles because this is copper sulfate. We know that, or sorry, this is copper sulfate. We know that all that's left is the copper sulfate. So that gives us moles of copper sulfate. And then we can use that ratio. So um, we know that here's the moles of water, here's the moles of copper sulfate. We divide by the smallest again. So this divided by this gives us five and one. So that means that there's five moles of water to every one mole of copper sulfate. So this is the, the mole ratio or the formula for the hydrate. So one um, CUSO4 dot five H2O. So that means that for every one molecule of this, there's five water molecules that are part of that crystal structure. So this is a practice. Um, it gives you all the information. So 3.55 grams of a hydrate nickel two chloride was heated in a crucible. Um, the anhydrous salt that was left over was a 1.937 grams. Um, so calculate moles of water, calculate moles of uh, the anhydrous uh, nickel two chloride, and then determine the formula. So I'd suggest you guys pause it, try it yourself, see what it looks like. Um, and I'll throw the answer up here in a couple seconds. So again, pause it, try it, and here's the answer in five, four, three, two, one, and there's your answer. So we end up with, you take grams of your sample minus the grams of the anhydrase, gives you mass of water. Mass of water to moles gives you 0 0.0895 moles of water. Um, and we can take the anhydrous and turn it into moles of salt. The water mole value should always be larger than that of the salt. There's that 
the only way this works. So it either needs to be the same number or it needs to be larger. So this needs to be, this will always be larger, greater than or equal to this value. So moles of water divided by moles of salt gives you 5.987. We can round that to six. So this is the general formula, NiCl2.6H2O. Last thing to talk about is combustion analysis. So combustion analysis is also an empirical problem. You just burn the sample first, and then you have to use the remains of the sample to figure out what the, the empirical formula was. Um, so this works for uh, compounds that burn. So it works for combustion-based compounds or based reactions. So we have some unknown CH compound. We burn it with oxygen to make CO2 and water. You'll notice here that all the carbon here goes and as a product appears in CO2, all of the hydrogen here appears in water. So basically we're going to analyze the, these remains to figure out what this thing was. Sometimes there can be O and um, oxygen and nitrogen here, and I'll show you a problem that involves that, but generally we're talking about carbon and hydrogen. So all the carbon ends up in CO2, all the hydrogen ends up in H2O. If oxygen is a part of the compound, the mass of oxygen in the sample will always be determined by subtraction. So you'll figure out all this other stuff and then you'll figure out oxygen by subtraction. And then nitrogen is determined uh, based off of these products. So it will usually make NO2, N2, or H, uh, NH3 um, and Usually you determine this in a separate experiment, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, so we can use the amount of carbon dioxide and water produced to find C and H respectively. If it contains nitrogen, we find grams of nitrogen from whatever nitrogen product there was, and we use a separate experiment to do that. Um, grams of all elements to find their percentages uh, from the original sample. And then once we know percentages, so like if it has oxygen, subtract, subtract the percent of the other elements from 100 and get the percent of oxygen. Um, but once we, not, once we know all the percentages, then it just becomes an empirical formula problem. So percent to mass, mass multiplied by small multiplied to whole. So basically three and four here is a normal empirical problem. We just have to do one and two first for a combustion problem. So we have to deal with CO2 and water, and then we also have to deal with oxygen if it's present and find the percentages respectively. So here is an example. 1.5 gram sample of hydrocarbon undergoes complete combustion um, to produce 4.40 grams of CO2 and 2.70 grams of H2O. So what is the empirical formula of this? So going through all of this, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Um, so uh, first thing we know is that all the carbon is going to CO2. So this random CH compound is going and making carbon dioxide. So we know here's how many grams of carbon dioxide are produced. Um, so we can turn that into moles of carbon. So divide by the molar mass of carbon dioxide gives us one for every one mole of carbon dioxide. For every one mole of carbon dioxide, there's one mole of carbon. So that gives us moles of carbon and carbon dioxide, respectively. Moles of carbon can go to grams of carbon. So there's 12.01 grams for every one mole. So that gives us 1.201 grams of carbon. Take that and divide it by the mass of the sample. And then multiply by 100, which I didn't write here gives us 80.1% carbon. So that means our sample was 80.1% carbon. Um, since this thing's a hydrocarbon and it didn't tell us about any other elements, we could use this just to figure out hydrogen, but we'll figure out hydrogen using water. So again, all hydrogen goes to water. So grams of water, two moles of water, two moles of hydrogen, so that gives us moles of hydrogen. Moles of hydrogen to grams of hydrogen. 
grams of hydrogen divided by our sample gives us the percentage. And if you'll notice, these two percentages add up to 100. So there was nothing else in that sample. That sample is just 80% carbon and 19.9% hydrogen. And then from there, it is a normal empirical problem. So percent of mass, mass to moles divided by small multiplied to whole. So that gives us 80.1 grams of carbon and 19.9 grams of hydrogen. Turn those both into mole values, divide by the smallest, multiply to a whole. And this right here is our overall empirical formula, um, which is CH3. Um, it doesn't tell us anything about uh, the molecular formula. It doesn't tell us any uh, molecular mass or the, the compound. So we're done. When we found the empirical formula, that's all, all it wanted. OK. Uh, this is another practice problem. This one is a little bit harder because it uses CH and O. Um, I, I, sorry, CH, O, and N. Um, so it has oxygen and nitrogen in it. Um, so it's dealing with caffeine, which is a stimulant. We can burn caffeine to produce this many grams of CO2, this many grams of hydrogen, and this many grams of nitrogen. Um, estimate the molar mass of caffeine, which lies between 150 and 200 grams per mole. So um, I want you guys to like, I would say try this problem, see what you can do with it. I know you haven't solved it with oxygen or nitrogen, but, but I would say pause it, try it, see what you can do. And um, I will throw the answer up here in a couple of seconds. So three, two, one, and walking through the answer here. Um, so uh, percent carbon. Well, we've done this a little bit already. So carbon dioxide we can use to get two moles of carbon. Moles of carbon gets us two grams of carbon divided by the sample, which is a one gram sample, which it um, tells us, yeah, right here, one gram sample. Um, so that gives us the percent of carbon. So carbon is 49.5% of this compound. Uh, hydrogen, we did that kind of on the last slide as well. It's a little squiggly. You also, I apologize for that. So um, grams of water, two moles of hydrogen, moles of hydrogen, two grams of hydrogen, divided by the sample, sorry again for the squiggly mess here, um, gives us 5.2% hydrogen. So we know percentage is percentage of carbon, we know percentage of hydrogen. To nitrogen, well, it tells us how many grams of N2 are produced, which makes life a little easier. Um, so this right here is mass of nitrogen in the compound because it's N2. If it was like NO3 or something else, we'd have to do a little bit more math. But this is mass of nitrogen divided by the sample times 100 gives us the percentage of nitrogen. So now we know percentage of carbon, hydrogen, and uh, nitrogen. To find oxygen, well, we know that this thing has to add up to 100%. So percent of carbon plus percent of hydrogen plus percent of nitrogen plus oxygen should equal 100. So we can just solve for what oxygen in here is um, by adding up all these other percentages and subtracting them from 100. So oxygen is 16.45%. Similar, it's an empirical problem. So turn all of those percentages into masses, figure out moles of each element. So carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. The smallest mole value is oxygen. So you divide them all by the smallest. And there, right there, is our empirical formula. Um, and done. That's empirical formula. Uh, the molar mass of the empirical formula is 97 grams um, per mole. We know that the, uh, sorry, the empirical mass, the molar mass lies somewhere between the 150 and 200. So basically, we the only thing we do is double this. Um, because if we were to multiply it by anything other than 2, we'd be outside of that range. So this is too small. If we double it, that puts us right in that range. And then if we go triple it or anything else, it's too big. So double everything. So there's the molecular formula of um, caffeine. So C8, H10, N4, O2. Um, 
last, uh, here's one last practice problem for you guys. So you guys should be able to do this one totally on your own. So I expect that you guys will pause it this time if you didn't before. Um, and it wraps everything else. This compound also has CH, O, and N in it. So uh, lysine, which is an amino acid, um, for those of you that enjoy bio, you'll, you should hopefully know what this thing is. Um, in a separate experiment, lysine was burned to produce 0.436 grams of ammonia, NH3. Um, the molar mass is approximately 150 grams per mole. So determine empiric form and molecular formula. So you guys should be able to do this. This might be the only part that is a little bit different for you. So um, if you get stuck here, I'll show you all my work here in just a second. But again, pause it, try it, and you'll see the answer in three, two, one. Oh yeah, look, there's the answer. You guys can't even see it because it's down here. All right, so um, again, percent carbon is pretty standard. So there's the percentage for carbon, 49.44. Hydrogen, again, using water, we can figure out that that is 9.74% hydrogen. Um, nitrogen, this is where it gets a little bit different. So grams of ammonia two moles of nitrogen. So we go from grams to moles of ammonia. There's one mole, for every one mole of ammonia, there's one mole of nitrogen. So that gives us moles of nitrogen. Moles of nitrogen times the molar mass of nitrogen um, gives us grams of nitrogen. Divide that by the sample times 100 gives us percentage. So it's pretty much what you would expect it to be. You just haven't seen this math yet before. Um, so we have the three percentages and to get oxygen well again add them all up subtract them from 100 that's the percent of oxygen percent to mass mass to moles divide by small multiply to whole so you'll notice here 1.366 divided by 1.355 not exactly one but it rounds to one um this also comes out to be 7.11. We just round this down. Um, if this was like 0.5 or 0.25 or 0.3, um, there was a little bit something different that we'd have to deal with here. But um, for now, that's not an issue. So that gives us our empirical formula. So C3H7NO. So here's the mass of the empirical formula. We know that the molar mass is about twice as much as that. So the only thing that we can do to this empirical formula that would give us this mass would be to double everything. So we do C6, H14, N2, um, O2, and this is lysine, uh, a friendly friend of ours. And that is it. Um, so hopefully you guys, hopefully this guys helped you guys understand empirical molecular formulas. Um, hopefully you know how to do hydrates now and combustion analysis. There usually is a combustion related question on the AP exam. Um, with the weirdness happening in 2020, I don't know if that will be on the exam this year or whatever, but um, any other year you can expect to see it in some way. It should be on your practice FRQs um, somewhere. So make sure you guys know how to do combustion analysis. Beyond that, I am out. Peace. Uh, take care of yourselves, and I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day.